So we got those y values from the unit circle, and we graphed every x, y coordinate on there now. Everyone's looking good. Before we uh, connect the dots, just finish up. So the next one's going to be negative one half. Okay, looking good, everybody. Looking good. Now, this is a sine curve, a smooth curve. It is not a heart monitor or something from the stock market. It is a smooth, rounded curve. Look at that butte. Look at that thing. Okay, it is a smooth curve. There's no peaks or valleys here or mountain ranges. Nice, smooth curve. Okay, when you connect it. Do your best. I'm not looking for greatness. Just do your best. <clears throat> okay, let's talk about this curve. Right there, what I'm showing you right now, and here's where it becomes intense. What I'm showing you right here, that is one full sine curve. That is what a sine curve looks like. If I extended my graph all the way to the right and had you graph more, guess what would happen? It would start repeating itself. All right, so if I had you graph more in this direction here, it would go up, down, finish. All right, this is what one full curve looks like. After this, it starts repeating. Before this, which is what we're gonna do in a second, it's gonna start repeating again, okay? This is what we refer to, and if you look at the top, as a periodic function. The y values repeat at regular intervals. Okay, and you see that. Hey, one half, one half, radical three over two, radical three over two. What I wanna do before we graph the left side is discuss this new vocabulary term, which is called period. All right, and it's up at the top of your page right now. The period is the horizontal length, horizontal length it takes to make a cycle. All right, so from here, here to here is the horizontal length it took to make a cycle. How long is that? Now remember, we're not going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Oh, it's 12 units. This is in radians. So from zero to what? How long did it take horizontally to make this full cycle? From zero to? Zero to? Zero to? I'll keep doing it. Zero to? Two pi. That's the period of the sine graph is two pi units. It's the horizontal distance it takes to make one full cycle, all right? Two pi. Now I got the challenge for you. Do you think you could graph it on the other side? It's gonna, remember what I said, it's gonna start repeating itself again. So do you think it's gonna go uphill or downhill now, if it's gonna repeat itself? It's gonna start going downhill. And I don't wanna do all these darn values again. I just wanna hit these main ones that I've had you label already. So. At pi over two here, it was up at one. Where do you think it's gonna be over at negative pi over two? Down to negative one. And then when we come over to pi or negative pi, it's gonna be back at zero. At negative three pi over two, it's gonna go up to one. And then at negative two pi, it'll be back at zero. See how it starts repeating. So now on your graph, you have two full cycles on your graph showing right now. Two full cycles. Okay, just keep repeating if you kept graphing. This is the last time I'm gonna have you do something on the table like this, last time. From now on, all I need are, ready? One, two, three, four, five key values. That's all I want you to graph now. 
0 pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. That's all I want you to graph from now on. Okay? So what can we say about sine? Here's how I always remember it. Sine always starts where? At 0. It always ends where? At 0. Well, at 0. Sine starts and ends at 0. Halfway in between, it's at 0. Okay? Sine will always start and end at 0. Questions, what the sine curve looks like, because now you're going to take over and I'm going to get two of you up at the board. Questions? All right. So that's what sine was equal to. What about if I change it now? What if I put a 4 in front? How does that affect my sine graph if I put a 4 in front? Anybody want to volunteer before I pick a number to come up here with somebody else in the class to help graph? It's not going to be that big of a deal, I can tell you that much. Okay, here we go. Let's do this. Don't lie about your number either. Let's not pull that business. Anybody have one? Lucas, who are you coming up with? Ethan, come on up, gentlemen. It's not going to take too long. There's pens on both sides here. You guys can use them at the same time. Bring your, bring, one of you guys bring your packet up. And everyone else here, just because you're not up here, doesn't mean you're not playing along here. OK, so I'm going to ask these guys to graph 4 sine x. OK, 4 sine x. And I only want to do the key values, which I've already put on the graph for them. All right, so here's my first question. And to everybody else, you think about it too. Where does sine start, fellas? At 0. So by multiplying it by 4, where is it still going to start? Plot it. Does everybody see that? Sine always starts at 0. 0 times 4, still at 0. Did not affect that one. Then at pi over 2, look at your packets if you have to. Where does sine go up to? 1, but now multiplying it by what? 4, so now at pi over 2, what's my new point? Not 1 anymore, but there you go. Graph it, 4. <laughs> pi, where's my original sine curve? Zero, is that going to affect, is that going to move it by multiplying it by four? Nope, graph it. Three pi over two. Usually it's at negative one, but when I multiply it by four, it's going to go to negative four. Graph it. And then where does sine always end? Is that going to affect it by multiplying it by four? And then somebody's going to have to volunteer to do the curve now. Drawing the curve. Okay, thank you. So that wasn't that bad, was it? Thank you, man. Lucas, I'll take your pen. Thank you. I'll take it for now. It's day one. I'll take it. So what effect did putting the four in front have on it? It didn't move these points anywhere. The zero stayed zeros. But instead of having going up to one, it went up to four and down to negative four. That was the effect. Okay? Still looks like a sine curve, doesn't it? Except I just stretched it out a little bit. Okay, so let's answer these questions. What's the period of y equals 4 sine x? Ready? Period. What's the horizontal distance it took to make one full sine curve? Still 2 pi, right? Everyone agree? I didn't change that. We're not going to change that either for a while. Period usually is going to be 2 pi. How long it takes, that horizontal distance. Range. Those are the x or the y values. Those are my y values. So let's start going around. You know what? You know how I'm going to do this now? All right. Instead of numbers and everything else, Ethan, you guys just went up. Pick somebody else. Pick somebody to answer this question for me. I don't care. Who are we going, Vinny? Okay. Range is y values. What do the y values range from? From what to what? 4 to negative 4, right? Now, we're, I'm going to have you write it appropriately. I'm, I think the best way to do it is uh, interval notation. Does it include 4? Does it include negative 4? OK, so I want, do you remember brackets or parentheses? Brackets. So bracket negative 4, comma, positive 4, bracket. 
The other way we could do it was inequalities. Anybody want to do that way? OK, well, let's just move on then. What's the difference between the max and the mins? Vinny, get, get somebody. OK, well, here we go. The, what's the maximum value on this graph? Four. Difference tells me to do what? Subtract. Minimum value. So minus negative four. So that'll turn into plus four. So what's the difference between them? Eight. And how else could we have done that? We could have just counted on our graph. From negative four to four, that would have been a distance of eight. All right, let's go on with somebody else. This is the best part. You ready? What quadrants is sine positive? And one and two, right? And hopefully I can connect this right now for you guys because this is an unbelievable piece of mathematics here. Hopefully you'll, you'll find the same uh, enjoyment. We'll see. Hey, this is what you guys are used to as far as quadrants, right? And one and two are right here. What's this degree measure? Zero or 360, right? What's this degree measure? 180. So you're telling me quadrants one and two go from zero to 180, right? Look on your graph. Ready? Go up, go up. Look on the graph you just did. From zero, what's 180 in terms of radians? One eight, zero to, where's 180 on here? Which one of these is 180? Which one? Pi. So this is quadrant one to two. Where are all your y values? Positive or negative? Positive. Okay. What, I, what we're doing is taking these four quadrants and stretching them out. Quadrant one, two, three, four. Okay. And where is it positive? One and two, right here. One and two. Okay, Brian, let's go. We need somebody else here. Let's rock. Somebody new. Who? Brooke, you ready? Where is sine increasing? So basically, where is this graph going uphill? Give me an x value to an x value. It's going uphill. Zero to pi. Does it start going down there, though? So from zero to pi over two. Everyone agree? From zero to pi over two, it's increasing, which means it's starting to go uphill. Yes? Yes, everybody? We're good? OK. So from 0 to pi, but you know I'm just not going to write that. I'm going to write it mathematically. So from 0 to pi over 2. Some of you may be wondering, why don't I put the or equal to? It's not increasing at those points. It's just there. OK, it's not increasing. Brooke, need somebody else. Is that the only place you see an increase, Anna? Going uphill. You saw it here, right? And now we're decreasing, 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 decreasing. And then what starts to happen here? And so at 3 pi over 2 to, to 2 pi. Everyone see the increase there? 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. So also from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. So two places. Need somebody, Anna. What line splits the maximum and minimum in half? So here's the max, here's the min. Give me another name for the line that cuts them in half. The, the y-axis? This is the y-axis. The x-axis. Everyone agree? Here are my minimum and max. The y-axis cuts it in half. I don't want to write y-axis, though. And I won't pick on anybody unless somebody knows it. Anybody know the equation for the y-axis? I mean the x-axis, sorry x-axis equation, y equals 0. Yep. And if you want to just remind yourself, we're talking about the x-axis. All right. Questions? One last thing before I move on. How high did this one go? To 4 to negative 4. Original sine curve went from what to what? 1 to negative 1. So you're telling me. This 4 had an effect on how high it went. Let's put a name to that 4 now. OK? That 4 now, the number out in front, is what we're going to refer to as, anybody want to try to pronounce it? Amplitude. That's the height of the graph. 
Okay, that's the height of my graph, right? And I'll get into it in a second when we do a couple more problems. But that number out in front is called my amplitude. All right, you guys just did a great job with sine. Now let's do it for cosine. But, hey, hey, do the same thing for me here. Can you guys plug in pi over 2 again and 3 pi over 2 in both directions? And I don't want to waste our time. Can you only find the find the y values for the key values? So at zero, here's all I want. Find it at zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. Okay. That's all I want because that's all I'm going to have you do from now on. And on your unit circle, what coordinate are you looking at now on the unit circle for doing cosine? We're looking at the x coordinate. Yep. We're looking at the x coordinate now at 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. So go ahead, fill it in. Catherine needs somebody new. Let's go. Here he goes. What did you find? The value at zero. 90. 180. 270. 360. Okay. Let's graph it now. Let's graph it, and we'll talk about the negative side after we graph it. Ooh. Oh. Unlike sine, where's cosine start? There's the biggest difference between the two. Sine always starts at zero, cosine starts somewhere else. In this case, it starts at one. And then I head down to zero. Go to negative one at pi. Back up to zero. Finish off at one. And this is a smooth curve. Some people refer to it as the U. Cosine looks like U, the letter U. Some people uh, in the past, anybody as a kid, read the Arthur the Aardvark books? Arthur the Aardvark, no, with the, he had the glasses. No, third period all over it, you guys nothing. Here's Greg. I don't know. It was, a, it was a book anyway. I know it was a, as a book, but do you have any idea what I'm talking about or no? Got me, Emma. All right, everyone good? There it is right there. There you see it. Not bad. Not bad.
this. <laughs> Not bad, huh? <laughs> See? Yeah, all right, all right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, we got it. All right, there it is. It reminds me of the Arthur. I didn't never seen the shows, but I had the book. So Okay. Uh, what's it gonna look like on the other side? It's gonna start repeating itself, just like sign did. So where do you think it the point's gonna be at negative pi over two? Where do you think it's gonna be at negative pi over two? Back at zero, yep. And then at negative pi, it's going to dip down to negative one. Back up, start repeating itself. And then end at one. But again, this is one full cosine curve, one full cosine curve. And again, hey, how long did it take to make one full cosine curve? How long horizontal distance it took to make one full cosine curve? 2 pi, same thing again. Period 2 pi. All right. Questions? Uh, anybody want to come up for this one before I pick a number? That wasn't that bad eh, on those guys. Okay, here we go. Let's pick a number. Here we go. Who's got four? Four? Unless you want to come up with somebody new. Okay. Here we go. 14? Okay, come on up with somebody, whoever you want to bring up with you. It's going to be pretty, uh, we're going to do the graph first. Let's do the graph first. Yeah, he's ready. Okay, ready? Whoever you're coming up with there. This will go pretty quick. However you guys want to do this. However you guys want to work as a team here. Okay, help them out, guys. Here we go. Where does co whoa, 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 whoa. Where does cosine usually start? At 1, but now I put a 1 half there. So instead of starting at 1, multiply it by a half. It's going to start at? One half, all right? Emma's already got that graph. Then it goes to where? Look at your curve. Where does cosine go after zero? It goes down to zero, right? At pi over two. Is that going to change by multiplying it by a half? Nope. So the zero is going to stay zero. At pi, it usually goes to negative one, but now it's going to go to negative a half. And then back to zero. That's not going to change. And where's it going to end? Add a half instead of one. Okay, uh, however wants to do the curve. Not bad at all. Nice job, ladies. Thank you very much. Nice job. Thank you very much. Just give me a hand. Jesus. It's, it's painful. Everyone okay? All right, now let's go back to the beginning now. Let's answer some questions here. What's the amplitude now? The amplitude, ladies, start calling on people here. I don't care who you go to. Here you go, ready, stud? Amplitude, that's the number out in front. A half, that tells me how high and how low it goes, right? And can we start doing this? Let's start denoting it as lowercase a, because that's how we're going to refer to it in the unit. Lowercase a is one half. Period of the function. Uh, all right. How long did it take these ladies to make this full cosine curve? Two pi. That until maybe tomorrow or Wednesday, I can't remember. That's not going to change. And can we go a capital P to denote period from now on? Maybe. Come on. I think you've been there. There we go. Capital P for the period. Two pi. Let's go, Brad. Need somebody. Who? Okay. Here we go. What's the max here, Alex? One half. And how about the minimum? There you go. So you guys are starting to see the power of that number out in front now. Need somebody. Matt, ready? Range. Does it include those values? 
So do I want parentheses or brackets? Negative one half to one half. Yep. And need somebody. Okay, Patrick, ready? Difference between the max and the min values, you can count them on your graph, or what is the minimum again, Patrick? Negative, I'm sorry, the max. Positive one half, that's my fault. Minus the minimum, which was, go ahead. Negative one half, so the difference between the two is one unit. Yep. And again, we could have counted that on the graph. Difference between the max and the min. All right, Patrick, need somebody here for this next one? What quadrants is cosine negative in? Second and third, yep. Now, I know you guys know that from last unit, from doing ASTC. But quickly, I want us to stress this. Reagan, need somebody. Who are we going? Emma, here we go. What's this degree up here, Emma? And then this one down here. So from 90 to 270, watch. I Go on your graph right now. 90 to 270, what do you notice? All of them are in what section of the y-axis? The negative. Everyone see that? In the negative part. All right. Good, good. And then finally, Emma needs a buddy. Vinny, ready? Decreasing. Where is this decreasing? From what to what on the x? I only want x values. Everyone see? Down, 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 down. Then I start going up. So from zero to what is it, Vinny? Pi. And again, I don't put the or equal to there because it's not decreasing here. It's just, I don't know, it's just there. It's not decreasing. Okay, one final thing. One final test here before uh, we call it a day and you start the assignment. Anybody, uh, I'll ask one more time. Anybody want to volunteer to come up here to do this last one? Anybody want to bring somebody up with them? All right, here we go. You guys are figuring out it's not that bad yet. Who's got five? All right, we're going to play this game here. Three. Who do you want to bring up, Isabella? Okay, come on up, ladies. This isn't. This will be go hopefully quick. Classmates will help you out. This is what we're going to do all unit two when we need to graph. People are just going to come on up here and help. Okay, ready? What? Okay, first question out to everybody. What curve are we doing? The what curve? Sine curve. Okay, so now I'm starting to think about the sine curve. Everyone, where does sine always begin? At zero. So does multiplying it by negative two affect that? There we go, we know our first point at zero. Then it usually goes up to what? Goes up to one, but what am I multiplying by this time? So where's that point gonna be at pi over two? Negative two, nice. And then it usually goes back to, is that going to affect it? Nope. So it's back to zero. Now at three pi over two, the original sine curve, the original sine curve is at negative one. So if I multiply it by negative two, it's going to be at positive two. Perfect. And then where sine always end? And that's not going to affect it by multiplying it by that negative two. All right. So who's doing the curve? Eh, not bad, not bad. You guys are rooks. It's okay. A little earthquake might have just happened. It's all right. In Delmar, a couple tremors. Let's see how we did this. Any issues? Not bad. I have a couple questions before I let you go on your own now. What is the amplitude? Amplitude. And I'm only asking because I want to drive home this point. Amplitude, remember, is height. Can height ever be negative? No, so it's always the positive version, all right? Always the positive version right there. So the amplitude is two, always the positive version. How about the period? How long did it take these ladies to make a full sine curve here? Two pi. And the last thing I just want to address well, what's the purpose of the negative then? If I don't put it in the amplitude, why'd you even put it there? Everyone remember our original sine curve. Looks something like this. There's my original sine curve. How's this one differ from this one? 
I know it goes up to two, but what, how else? It's flipped, isn't it? It's flipped. That's the effect of the negative. Anytime there's a negative out in front, your curve will be flipped over the x-axis. All right? So the amplitude is the positive version of the number, and what the negative does, that flips it over the x-axis. Okay? Questions? Okay, you got plenty of time. Let's get going here. Plenty of time to, for me to walk around and making sure uh, you know what's going on.